All right. Good afternoon, Facebook. It is two o'clock, about an hour later than our program normally broadcasts, but we're so thrilled that we're still going to be able to bring you today's episode. Uh, we ran into technical difficulty after technical difficulty, but that is technology in the year 2020. So uh, we are so glad that we were able to get everything connected. Thanks to everyone that is out there that sent us encouraging messages, letting us know that you were planning on still tuning in. Um, we're glad that you're here and that you're going to be able to spend some time with us. Uh, if this is your first episode ever of this live cast, you've tuned in to This Moment in History, COVID-19 in Athens, Georgia. Each weekday at one o'clock since April, we've been exploring and documenting this unique and often difficult time in our community, nation, and world's history. Uh, we're here specifically to look at COVID-19 and the impact that it's happening on having on community leaders um, around Athens, Georgia. But history doesn't come at you only one event at a time. And so uh, we also are gonna be touching on other interventions that have taken place, including a very historic one that is incredibly relevant for the organization we're gonna be interviewing today. So uh, if you're tuning in and you've watched before, you already know that uh, you can participate. This is not just an episode to watch. This is also an episode that you can take part of. If you have any questions, comments, words of encouragement, thoughts, feelings, anything like that, just comment below the live video on our main Historic Athens Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash Historic Athens. And we can absolutely include you in today's dialogue. One last note, uh, each week of this program has been made possible by a different local sponsor. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, so we rely on the generosity of our community to keep our 52-year-old mission going. Uh, this week was brought to you by the Athens Downtown Development Authority. Uh, you can find them on Facebook under their Downtown Athens Georgia page. Uh, we really appreciate David Lynn, Linda Ford, uh, everyone over there that helped us with this week and uh, to bring this program to you. Uh, with that said, I see from the comments that you're eager to get uh, started. We are eager to get started as well. Uh, this is a very special day, not just because of who we're going to be speaking to, but because it's the most guests we've ever had simultaneously um, from different locations. And so uh, that presented its own technical challenge that we're, fingers crossed, uh, we feel good that we've resolved. So uh, if you'll bear with me just one moment, I'm going to make some switches around and we will get all of our guests on screen. So bear with us one second and our conversation will begin. All right, there's Joe Beth Allen. There's Bobino Ramos. And then we are waiting on Gerardo. Um, and when he reconnects, we will go ahead and make sure we include him. There he goes. One second. And Gerardo's camera usually takes just a moment to log on. We've learned. Great. There we go. All right, and uh, we have Gerardo Navarro here as well. So, um, hello everyone, we did it. We're online, we're on the internet. How, how's everyone doing today? Good, okay, one second here. Uh, Balbina, I'm turning your audio on. Joe Beth, I'm turning your audio on. Okay, everyone, let's try that one more time. Audio check, Joe Beth, we're there? Yes. Balbina, we're there? Yes. Okay, Gerardo, we're there? We're here. We're there. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so um, <laughs> uh, these these folks have been with us since uh, about twelve forty five, trying to figure out how we can bring this program to you today. Um, I really appreciate their stick to itiveness and their patience. Um, and as part of that patience, you know, this program would typically end at two o'clock. Uh, they've agreed to t spend some additional time with us so that we don't have to cut off uh, right away. So we're going to take some time to talk to you. So. Um, I'd like to just start by making sure that everyone who's tuned in knows what ULEAD is. So today's guests are all associated with an organization called ULEAD Athens. You can find them on Facebook under ULEAD Athens. Uh, it's an organization that is well known around Athens, but I imagine we're gonna have some viewers that are only partially familiar with it or aren't fully familiar with it. Um, Joe Beth, I know that you've helped coordinate with this program for quite some time. If you wanted to give our audience, could you give our audience a crash course in what you lead is? In um, 
2014, um, a group of uh, local teachers and uh, UGA teachers, as well as Clark County teachers, um, talked with students and uh, tried to figure out what how we could help uh, students go to college who wanted to go to college regardless of their documentation status. Um, it was at that time that uh, the uh, Board of Regents banned students from the University of Georgia if they were not U.S. citizens and from other um, uh, high inst uh, institutions of higher education in the state and uh, also then um, made students pay whatever the highest rate was for tuition for all the rest of the technical colleges, community colleges, universities. Um, and so students said, we want an organization that will show us how to find a college that we can go to, help us get in and help us be able to afford to attend it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so since then we have met nearly every Thursday um, for six years from six o'clock to eight o'clock in the fellowship hall at Oconee Street United Methodist Church. And we have wonderful volunteers. We have students uh, of um, all ages in high school and a few younger ones who come with older siblings. But we're most, mostly focused on juniors and seniors in high school and also students who have maybe graduated a few years ago who um, uh, are just finding out that they can still go to college. And we have people who help with uh, tutoring for SAT and ACT and the um, test at, uh, at the technical colleges uh, as well. Uh, they Our volunteers help with um, FAFSA and with the Common App, finding scholarships and that sort of thing. So all of that tutoring goes on uh, consistently year round. Uh, the uh, A second thing we do at those meetings is do DACA renewals, which is particularly exciting today because people That's who right. have DACA will be able to continue to renew uh, their applications every two years and pay the federal government $495. Um, and the third thing that uh, ULE does is provide scholarships. So we have over 70 students in college right now on ULE scholarships. So thank you so much for that excellent summary, Joe Beth. Now that we have at least a, a bird's eye view of the program itself, I want to make sure that we take some time to get to know everyone we have here. First of all, I can see from our comments that some of our regular viewers are here. So I just want to welcome them. I see Jennifer Martin Lewis alerting others that the live cast is up. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, I see Deborah Gonzalez here thanking us for keeping at it. Deborah. Thanks for tuning in almost every day, maybe every day, um, and for sticking here with us. And then I see Alex Sams, uh, who always makes this part of his lunch break, saying he's shifted his schedule around to uh, stick around and listen. Thanks for working it out. So great. So that's that's just a taste of some of our audience that's out there. Let's get to know who we're interviewing. So um, uh, Joe Beth, we'll, we'll come back to you in just a moment. Let's start uh, with Gerardo. So Gerardo, can you take a moment just to introduce yourself and, and talk about your relationship to you lead and to Athens, Georgia? Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Gerardo. I am a class of 2020 graduate from Clark Central High School. And uh, my relationship to you lead started around last year in junior year where I started to come to you lead um, a bit often to see how it, how the program works and I started to see how much it can help out but then I kind of fell out um more towards my spring more towards the spring semester mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of classes and such and uh now this year I started to come back to you lead full time coming every Thursday mm -hmm. to uh, always uh, see what I can do since that's, this was my first time uh, filling out some college applications. So yeah. And uh, with the whole COVID thing, uh, I've been attending the Google Meet, the Google Hangouts for a while mm -hmm. to see what, mm -hmm. to see uh, if I have any questions I can ask the you lead uh, and to receive some help as well. Absolutely, thanks Gerardo, I appreciate it. Um, Balbina, can you take a moment just to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, guys. My name is Balbina Ramos. I am a 2014 graduate from Monsignor Donovan Catholic High School. Mm -hmm. um, I started going to ULEAD probably about a year ago as well. Um, unfortunately, when I graduated, I didn't know ULEAD existed at the time, um, but 
Um, I was fortunate enough to get a soccer scholarship in a small community college in the University of South Carolina. Um, they waived my out-of-state tuition fee and um, they helped me um, a little bit with uh, my books from a, a personal uh, soccer scholarship that they had going on. Unfortunately, I fell ill and I got a sickness that doesn't allow me to play sports anymore. Mm. So um, I lost my soccer scholarship and I had to drop out of school because it was just too much money for us to pay out of pocket. Um, and that I had to come back home. I took a, a two year gap pretty much. Um, and during that time, I was fortunate enough to get a job at a law firm. And um, at the law firm, I was doing, I learned how to do Docker renewals and stuff like that. So when I got integrated in, in ULEAD, I started helping um, my fellow peers fill out their Docker application. I apologize for the noise in the background. No, no, um, no. But yes, that's where I'm at right now. ULEAD actually helped me um, get a full ride scholarship to the University of Delaware. And um, I am continuing to go to ULEAD. And I'm so blessed that they created this organization to help all of us. Absolutely. Thank you. What, what, a, what a tremendous story. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, jo Beth, can you take a moment to introduce yourself and your relationship to Athens? Yes, I've lived in Athens since um, the olden days in 1986 and taught at the University of Georgia in the Department of Language and Literacy Education for 28 years. Um, retired five years ago, uh, six years ago now. And um, I love Athens, love everything about uh, living in Athens, and uh, I feel very, very fortunate to be able to work with incredible students like Balbina and Gerardo. Mm. So thanks, Joe Beth. So, you know, when we record this broadcast uh, each day, one of the things we always emphasize to our audience and to our guests is that we're really talking to two audiences. We're talking to today's audience, or 2020s audience, folks that either watch this live or stream it later. Um, but then we're also talking to people down the road because part of what set us on this path and doing this program was as COVID was emerging, we wanted to find out how Athens had handled things like this in the past. We went back to look at what uh, was still on the historic record for the 1918 flu and the way that it impacted Athens. And we realized there was a good amount of resources and we wanted there to be additional resources for future generations that want to understand now in the future. The reason why I say all that uh, to you three is that, you know, policy changes so quickly. And I could see a situation where 50 years from now, folks don't even remember what DACA was um, or, 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 or really how it works. So would any of you mind, uh, just uh oh by the way joe beth you'll be happy to see i see ginger here saying uh, 1986 that ain't old uh so uh so we're off you're, you're off the hook um but uh would one of you feel comfortable doing a little bit of a deeper dive into explaining to our audience what daca is and how it works i know joe beth you alluded to it 495 dollars and all um but uh could someone just kind of uh take us through that well, Balbina is our DACA specialist, so I'll let her talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so DACA was a program that was created back in 2012 um, during the Obama administration. And it's kind of um, a temporary fix to the illegal status that um, a lot of youth immigrants are suffering. Mm -hmm. um, personally, in my case, I came to the United States when I was three years old. Ever since then, I grew up here in Athens. Um, as you know, I speak better English than I do Spanish. So um, this is what I consider home. And so a lot of kids that are in that same situation, um, we couldn't have a work permit. We couldn't have social security. We couldn't go to school. We couldn't get a driver's license, things like that. So what DACA does is they it allows us to, to have that. Um, access to that. Um, we still don't have access to financial aid, um, any government support um, or things like that. Um, we have to renew our work permit um, every two years. Well, before that, every year and a half because it's six months before your work permit is about to expire. And we pay $495 to, uh, dollars to the government in order to have this benefit. Um, 
with the Trump administration, what they had initially done is um, they weren't allowing any more new applications. Um, so it was only constant renewal. So there were a lot of people who um, weren't 15 years old at the time, and that was a minimum age requirement. And so they were left out, but luckily, hopefully, they'll open up new new applications and they'll be able to apply. They also, um, before the Trump administration, we were allowed to um, go outside the country with something called advanced parole. That's for mm -hmm. humanitarian reasons, um, for educational purpose, or for um, uh, work purposes. And hopefully, they open that up for us as well. Absolutely. Um, thanks for sharing that, Belvina. And um, uh, I see Deborah Gonzalez has shared a few comments uh, in the video section itself, if you'd like to see more um, information on, on some of the basics. So, um, Joe Beth, can you take a moment and just outline, now that Belvina's uh, given us an outline on, on how DACA works, uh, we've referenced several times already that today, was a historic day uh, for folks that ha that are on DACA. Uh, it's sheer coincidence that we were scheduled to be on today and then the Supreme Court decision landed this morning. But um, would you feel comfortable just talking a little bit about uh, today through your lens? Well, um, there have been a lot of tears <laughs> of joy. Um, I've been getting lots and lots of messages um, from students saying, is it true? And, um, you know, just a lot of relief, um, a lot of um, hope that maybe uh, this will lead to um, uh, um, other changes. I, I think the thing for us to remember uh, is even as we celebrate the students, uh, the uh, young people who do have DACA, uh, that there are 11 million undocumented uh, residents in the United States who have been here anywhere from one to 40 years, um, mm. and they don't have any kind of uh, those protections. So while we're really celebrating this victory, what we need is comprehensive uh, immigration reform and a pathway to citizen, a uh, pathway to citizen for DACA students, which has been in some of the dreamer bills that have come so close to passing but have not, but also, also a pathway to citizen to uh, uh, citizenship for others. So uh, thank you for that. So uh, for those of you that haven't looked much into the reporting on today's Supreme Court decision, and and uh, Balbina or Joe Beth, if e either of you know that I'm uh, that I've said the following thing incorrectly, and I see Gerardo's uh, going to be logging back in here, so we'll get him back on the line here in a second, but. Uh, from what I've read about today's decision, uh, the uh, the Supreme Court, in a decision penned by Justice Roberts, um, has indicated that uh, here I'm going to get uh, Harada back online with us. One second. Okay, great. Welcome back. Um, uh, so, my understanding of, from the articles I've read this morning is that in a decision penned by Justice Roberts. Uh, the Supreme Court overturned uh, the Trump administration's ability to end DACA. Now, the the justification, as I read it, did not say that DACA can never be ended, if you'll excuse the double negative, but it did indicate that the, the rationale given by this administration was not sufficient to end it at this time. Uh, I've read that that does leave the door open for further attempts to end DACA, although there seems to be a consensus that that would be unlikely to happen uh, in an election year, especially given I saw public polling that even amongst 2016 Trump voters, people who voted for Trump in 2016, DACA has about a 69% approval rating. So uh, it, does, it seems to be an extremely popular program. Uh, did every, everything that I outlined there, Joe Beth, does that line up, or Balbina or Gerardo, does that line up with what you you understand and are experiencing out there? Balbina? Yes. So I actually called um, the attorney where I, I used to work at to get more information about um, what happened today. And 
that is what they told me. Um, they also said that they didn't um, quite specify what are the exact guidelines that, um, like, they did say they couldn't take it away, but they didn't say if they were going to allow new initial applications or bring back advanced parole. They said we're waiting on um, USCIS to post the exact guidelines that they have to follow. Um, and they're going to determine it. So it's really, they made the decision and are allowing you with CIS to determine the rest of the guidelines. Absolutely. So I, I, I want to get back to this, but it, given that it is absolutely so timely, I thought we needed to start right there. But I, I want to double back to COVID for a moment with all of us and then come back with the time that we have to this particular situation. So, um, uh, Gerardo, you already helped us start off a little bit on COVID by answering a question I had, which is uh, you lead, as Joe Beth mentioned, meets every Thursday. Uh, and yet right now, we, you know, the last several months, we haven't been able to meet in person. So I know you mentioned that meetings have gone online. Is that right, Gerardo? Yes, it is. So, so since you were the first one to bring up COVID, I'm going to go to you first on COVID. So, uh, not just including you, Lee, just your life in general. Can you talk about how the last few months of COVID-19 has played out for you? Um, so if I can remember correctly, um, yeah, it did happen uh, right after I got back from uh, a journalistic, uh, a journalism convention in South Carolina, mm -hmm. where I heard that we were all gonna be on lockdown until further notice, and I was like, Oh, all right, this is just gonna be temporary. But then uh, I found out from the principal uh, Clark Central that that they're gonna have to close down the, the entire, the, for the remainder of the school year. And I was really bummed out about it because as a senior, it, it kind of does take away all that, all those act senior activities that you were really looking forward to. And uh, just uh, getting to say goodbye and just have some final last words with your teachers. And I was planning on uh, having some final last words with my teachers right before I leave for college. And I was really bummed out about that because I never knew that the last time that I would see them was around early March or mm. yeah, early March. And with that, um, let's see what else. And I was also um, take gone on furlough at my job, which um, I didn't really get to work that. Now because I really did love at Chuck E. Cheese, so mm -hmm. it was fun to work at. Absolutely, and, and I know you mentioned that you um, that you got back from a journalism conference. Uh, which, uh, can you tell us more about that? Do you work with Odyssey over at Clark Central or did you? Yes, in fact, I did uh, work uh, for the Odyssey Media Group at Clark Central as a visual staffer. Hmm. And I gotta say, it has been a pretty fun experience for me uh, as it helped me grow into the person I am today. Which like, um, I used to be a very closed off in the beginning of my high school years for two years. Then thanks to Odyssey, I started to be more out there and start to start to socialize a lot more with people as well. And it also helped me uh, gain some uh, experience with interviews as well. Absolutely, that's great. Well, that's, that's very funny, I actually. Uh, where is it? I've got a couple hanging around here. So yeah, so when I was at Cedar, I know, I know, I know. But when I was at Cedar, like th this is like I I did photography for Blueprints back when Blueprints was. Uh, a much smaller deal than it is now, but that's great. And um, that's such an exciting thing for you to share that um, that it helped you feel more confident and comfortable. Um, uh, are you hoping to take the skills that you, you learned as a visual editor and photographer and, and contributor? Obviously, if you're going to journalism conferences, it's something you take seriously. Are you wanting to pursue a career in journalism? So what I originally planned to have is to pursue a career in photography since that's what I'm mo most passionate about. But I also plan uh, on continuing journalism as I figured that it's another pathway that I could take in life because I never realized that uh, I could use, uh, because I never realized that there are other pathways that I could uh, take uh, on as a career in the future. Mm -hmm. 
And journalism mm -hmm. uh, was uh, an eye-opening um, viewpoint where I can finally see that I can uh, take journalism more farther than just in high school. And yes, I do plan on uh, majoring in journalism at Georgia State. All right. And I also right. plan on uh, applying for The Signal, which is their their news magazine over there. All right. Well, you're going to be a big right. um, So uh, that's very exciting. That's great. Um, Balbina, let's turn to you for a moment. So uh, can you talk about how COVID-19 unfolded in your life and how it's affected you? Yes. Yeah, so um, it was a little weird for us because <laughs> since I've been going to school in Delaware, um, we were actually on spring break when everything went down. Um, so I came home for spring break and pretty much how it happened is they told us um, spring break is extended another week. Don't come back. We'll keep you posted. Um, just give us some time. Um, obviously, since we were just coming home for spring break, we didn't bring back books. We, um, you know, left all that in our rooms, in our dorms. We didn't bring back much stuff. Um, and then um, in that second week, they were like, um, we're not coming back. Um, everybody, please stay home. Um, and so they started saying that they were going to do online classes. Um, everybody started freaking out because, you know, we didn't have the materials to go back to classes. Um, um, a lot of us didn't have the technology to do our online classes. Um, some of us were doing, like, you know, computer classes or engineering mm -hmm. classes, and we need specific equipment to do those. So... Um, it was a little hectic. The teachers didn't know um, how to do online classes, so it was it was kind of frantic. And as you see, it's it's very loud in my house, so that's another um, downside of it. Um, we have three birds that won't stop talking, talking. Um, so it was just kind of kind of a little bit all over the place. But um, I'm glad to be home. Another downside of it is uh, I'm an accounting major. Mm -hmm. So I had started an accounting internship in Delaware. Um, I was three weeks into it, but since the coronavirus, I had to let that go because I couldn't stay in Delaware. Mm. Um, but we're working with, with the flow, how it's going. Thanks for sharing, Balbina. And uh, growing up, I had a bird at one point. I could one bird was loud. I can only imagine having three birds talking to one another. So thanks for sharing. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to just pause for a moment to say that as much as uh, we're having a pleasant time talking to each other, I appreciate you, you all sharing some of the more difficult aspects here. You know, in, internships can be important. So, Bob, you know, not, you're not being able to complete that. I'm sure that that's difficult. Um, Gerardo, in a moment, I want to go back to something you said that really made an impact on me, which was you talking about departing seniors, not realizing that their senior year was gonna end in such a way where they wouldn't have that chance for those big goodbyes that, that kind of define the high school experience. And so I wanna, I wanna spend some time on that. Um, but Jobeth, turning to you, both as someone who works with you lead and just as a human being, uh, can you outline your, your own COVID experiences? Well, I can't hug my grandchildren, that's pretty major. Mm -hmm. um, I, I uh, miss my church community a lot. Uh, Tommy and I are in the church, same church community. Um, it, it, but the biggest impact has been on not being able to make, meet face to face with you lead. Um, we usually have uh, anywhere between 60 and 80 people there on a Thursday night. Uh, we have fellowship with food. We, you know, we hug, we, um, share each other's lives and uh, it's just always the highlight of my week to be there. Um, and the, uh, the Google Hangouts just not the same, right. you know, uh, not nearly as many people come and you can't do the same kind of work. So you lead is, is gearing up and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later to, um, to create a, a better online experience and, and keep our work going. But um, one of the big things that I miss this year, the highlight of the year every year is graduation. At graduation, we have about 120 people 
uh, filling that room. We have all the families there. Um, the families bring an incredible feast for us to share together. Every student crosses the stage and holds up a sign saying uh, where they're going to college or if they're going to take a gap year and do something else. Um, we have returning college students who give advice to um, people who are just starting college. And it's just the most wonderful celebration, kind of something very much like the, the graduation ceremonies, you know, something you kind of work towards your whole um, career as a student. So it was very, very hard not to have that this year. So, you know, uh, Joe Beth, uh, one common question we get from our audience when we're talking to people that are working with organizations, I'd say like yours in that social benefit organizations, charitable organizations, organizations working to improve the world. Um, a lot of times our audience asks, what can we do now to support the work you're doing? So if we ha if there is a viewer watching this who's inspired by the work that you lead does, um, do you, Joe Beth, or anyone on uh, Balbina or Gerardo? All right, good. We got a, we got a, we got some links here. So um, I'm gonna Joe Beth here. I will. Uh, let's let's bigify Joe Beth for a second here. All right, Joe Beth. I, I've got a uh, a link here. So there's a Venmo. Um, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and then we also have uh, the U Lead website, so uleadathens.org forward slash uh, donate. And of course, you know, I, I was a fool to underestimate you, Joe Beth. Of course, you would have a uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> links already ready to go. So, um, can I uh, talk about that for just a second, Tommy? Yeah, yeah please, please now, take your time. Our, our, our biggest um, commitment is to supporting our students not only to start college, but to finish college. Mm -hmm. uh, we have over 20 students now who have graduated from college since we started in 2014. And we wanna make sure every one of our uh, current students is able to do that. And fundraising during this time is, is um, more difficult. And so, um, it, you know, if people want to see uh, students like uh, Balbina and Gerardo, not only go to college, but be able to finish their degrees, uh, that is a, a wonderful way that you could help them do that is by donating. Uh, that's fantastic. And, and thank you to Deborah for sharing the link in our comment section, specifically the donate link. Um, so uh, Joe Beth, I wanna, I wanna just uh, ask a follow-up if it's okay. Uh, you mentioned that your goal is not just to get people into college, it's to help them graduate. Can you talk a little bit more about that? So we, we always tell our um, students who are heading off to college, you know, you're still a member of the ULEAD family. Uh, it's not like, okay, you're through now. Um, and so some of them, you know, take us up on that on a regular basis and say, hey, I've got an essay due tomorrow. Can somebody read it for me and give me some feedback? Um, we had last week, we had two people post. One of them needed a math tutor for a, su a summer course and another was looking for an internship. So we, we really appreciate it when our students um, do stay connected with us that way. Uh, plus, they apply every year for the ULEAD scholarship. So that fund that all of you are now donating to um, it's a reapplication every year and students that uh, tell us how their year went, they uh, share their grades with us, mm -hmm. uh, which are usually pretty darn good. And uh, they also say if they need any other kind of support. And so um, we try to stay connected uh, that way. Also, two of the programs where our students have a lot of scholarships, so the Dream US mm -hmm. and Bonner scholarships, and both of those, Babina is a Dream US scholar, um, both of those are four-year full-ride scholarships, but they also are a support group in and of themselves on the campuses. Um, and so we stay in contact with those programs to make sure that things are going well for our students. Thank you for sharing. And, and speaking of sharing, I see that um, the community of Athens uh, is also passionate about ULEAD, so I see a few other links to share. One I wanted to share, uh, just that I saw that in addition to donate, there's a get involved link on the website. Um, so various ways folks can get involved there. Um, Joe Beth, I don't know if this is current, but Kelly Bivens just shared an Amazon wish list associated with ULEAD. Is that right? 
Uh, I haven't looked at it for a while, so I don't know how current it is, but I will right after that. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. That's excellent, Kelly. Thank you. Um, uh, Joe Beth, I've known folks that that have gotten involved um, either through providing meals or, or helping tutor. So, I mean, it, it or um, folks who may, might be willing to read those essays. If there are people out there that want to get involved with you, lead from that end. Can you tell us a little bit more on that? Uh, yeah, so that kind of leads into how we're modifying. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so we don't know when we're going to be able to reopen. It depends on the uh, what uh, the school system does, and it depends on what the church does in terms of the building availability. Mm -hmm. So um, we're we're hoping we'll be able to start in a few months, but obviously not right away. So starting the first Thursday in August, mm -hmm. we're going to have a model where our uh, volunteers work with two to three students individually and keep up with them through the week and through the year, really. Um, and so those volunteers are our college coaches. Mm -hmm. And that is the main role that people could take right now. If you want to become a college coach, work with two to three students. Um, the time commitment is six to eight on Thursday. You may decide to do more outside of that, but that's the basic time commitment. The um, the structure of the meetings will be that we'll all meet together, students and volunteers in the beginning and do a check-in, and then we'll break out into chat rooms. So in one room, people might be applying for FAFSA. In another room, they might be working on um, math preparation for the SAT. In another room, they might be uh, just starting to explore what colleges accept students um, yeah. who have an undocumented status. So that's, that's how we're planning. Excellent. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Gerardo, I want to go back to senior year conversation. So, you know, as Joe Beth was talking about FAFSA and all the, the various college coaching that you lead provides, it, may, it made me just flash back to my senior year. And it, it's such a deafening and blinding time because you have so many things flying at you. And Balbina, if nothing else, maybe you can help uh, as we're uh, experiencing some uh, connection issues with Gerardo, you might be able to answer this as well. Uh, let, let's focus on your experience. Uh, what does it feel like, I guess, to be involved in ULEAD? What does it feel like to have that assistance, to have that coaching, to have someone in your corner, especially, you know, uh, not just once, but as you were gearing up to go back to uh, college in the University of Delaware? What, what does it feel like to be connected in? I really like being a part of ULEAD. Um, it makes me know that um, I'm not alone and that there's other people like me and also people that um, are willing to help and that know a little bit more on who to reach out or where to reach out in order to get help. Um, I know, as I mentioned before, I did come from Monsignor Donovan Catholic High School. So um, I... I think that had to do a lot with me not knowing um, you lead existed mm -hmm. just because, you know, mainly um, for well, not mainly really for Clark Central and Cedar Shoal and public school kids. But it was mainly advertised throughout their school because, um, uh, you know, it was created by teachers in 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 there. I heard of you lead in reality because my brother um he decided to switch from Monsignor Donovan into Clark Central and his counselor um, was the one who told him about it. Then my he went with my dad. My dad um, spoke to Ms. Bettina and then um, that's when my dad found out that they they had help for um, for DACA students. And not only that, but um, even if you had already graduated or even if you weren't anymore in, in high school. So that was very, very helpful for me. Thank you. Um, yeah, I see. I see but th thank you for sharing that that uh, that experience. Uh, Gerardo, I wanted to spend more time talking about your senior year. Can you tell us a little bit more about that experience and how COVID impacted it? Um, so so with how classes went, our teachers uh, really did keep in touch with us through Google Classroom and emails. And I really do appreciate them for always trying to keep uh, us uh, motivated and motivated and stay in touch uh, just to continue working with them and with classwork as well. And I gotta say that 
in the beginning of the whole quarantine thing, I I was really caught up in most of my classes, where it was just mainly review. Um, but like uh, towards the end, uh, around April or May, I started to fall out as uh, as uh, gradings and uh, of how the grading score will be uh, will be put, as in uh, as in the classwork cannot uh, cannot. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. Oh yeah, the the classwork cannot decrease your grade, but it can only increase it. And for most of my classes, I already uh, was doing well with 80s and 90s. And I even messaged my teachers to see uh, if there's anything else that I need to do to improve my grade. And uh, most of them were all right with how my grade was. So I didn't need to do any work for their classes. And, and other teachers, they gave me some more work to do. And I really appreciated that because I got to work uh, and to bring my grade up as well. And as for the senior traditions, I was actually really like um, in my freshman and sophomore uh, see the seniors uh, walk through, uh, cheer for them, applaud them that they're finally graduating. And uh, once it hits me uh, like around junior year, well, around junior year, I started to take uh, photos for the for the class of 2019 graduation for the Odyssey Media Group. And, uh, and then it hit me, wow, it's really going to be my time on that stage mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when when I heard that that graduation was, wasn't going to happen anymore, I was really devastated because, because not only uh, I really look forward to graduation, but also to like um, tell my mom in a way that we finally made it because she came here to the United States and had to give up her high school education. So this was like a re really a moment for the both of us to, sh to share an experience. Yeah, and, and so thank yeah. you for saying that. So that, that losing that or not being able to have that full experience has gotta be uh, a really uh, emotionally difficult thing. If yeah, I it may is. Add <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, on our, our side in college, I know it, it hit hard also for a lot of fellow dreamers, um, especially with the dream.us. This this year was the first cohort um, or the first year to um, graduate from college. Um, and I know um, a lot of their feeling was they were told growing up, you know, it's probably not going to be possible for you to graduate from college here in the United States. And now that they finally got to that point, um, they don't get to walk across that stage and um, say, I've finally got my bachelor's degree, or I finally got my nursing degree. I finally got, you know, and it's very, it was heartbreaking to see um, all of them break down in tears and um, all their parents say, you know, we, we made it, but we can't, share it to the world that we made it. We don't get to have that moment where we walk across the stage and hold our diplomas and, um, you know, move your tassel over and stuff like that. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds very difficult. And and um, and that's extremely heartbreaking, especially given all the difficulty it takes to get to that point. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, Balbina, you brought up the, this idea of uh, other folks in the in the dreamers community, and so I'm just curious whether a, any of you, Joe Beth, Balbina, or Gerardo, um, have you heard any stories that we should document today uh, about how COVID-19 has affected fellow dreamers? Stories like the one you just shared, Balbina. Um, I know that a lot of my um, friends that are in college. Um, some of them aren't as fortunate as as us to have parents supporting them, and um, some of them are having to live on their own. Mm -hmm. um, the Dream US scholarship um, helped us get housing, and now with uh, the whole coronavirus, COVID nineteen, um, them having to go back to their home states, um, they really didn't have a place to go back to, or now they're having to. Um, pay more rent or mm -hmm. having to get last minute places where they weren't counting on additional expenses and stuff like that. So it was kind of um, 
hard for them on that aspect. And again, since all our jobs were in Delaware, when they came back home, they had no job. And with all the cutbacks because of the COVID-19, it was very difficult for them to find jobs. Um, so that's on that side. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I see we've got a Gerardo fan uh, here. So I saw uh, Gerardo, you smile and you noticed it. So we got to go Gerardo here from Brianna Johnson. Thank you for the encouragement. Um, Joe Beth and Gerardo, uh, do either of you have other stories that you've heard um, about life during COVID-19 that we should document today? Um, so, so just what, so what, so how I managed to cope through this uh, quarantine is just like never give up on, uh, like, even though times seem difficult, just don't never, don't, don't give up on anything because, because there's always going to be a light at the end of the end of a tunnel and um, always try to, and always take this time to just reflect on uh, who, on you, who you are and just see you know, um, and try out new things like um, any hobbies that you wanted to explore to then do that then do it and if there's anything that you uh, there's a book that you that you haven't caught up with yet then go ahead and read it <laughs> yes that, that's, great, that's great advice and something i know that uh that a lot of us are starting to do those books that are just been collecting dust are starting to get picked up um i i see a really great show of support here and it won't show on screen, but the full comment was submitted both in English and in Spanish. But it just said, uh, thank you, Balbina and Gerardo, for sharing your stories and experiences. I applaud you both on your academic successes and your persistence and determination. You are our future. So uh, thank you to Aaron Thompson Podvin for sharing that. Uh, Joe Beth, Balbina, Gerardo, um, I need to take a quick moment to thank our annual sponsors. Um, and then when we come back, uh, there are three questions we've been asking each of our guests, and I'll just run those through with, with all three of you, okay? So if you'll just stand by for one second, we'll go ahead and, and make that transition. So let's uh, get rid of this guy. There we go. And um, we will go ahead and uh, just thank our sponsors very briefly. So, uh, all right. So um, to everyone that has tuned in, uh, these are our annual sponsors. Maybe this is your first interaction with Historic Athens. We're a 52-year-old nonprofit here in Athens, Georgia. We work to celebrate and conserve community heritage in Athens. Sometimes that's through the historic preservation of historic sites and places. Um, sometimes through it's through things like you see here today, which is preserving uh, oral history and public history. Uh, we want to thank everyone on this list for making our work possible. You can visit historicathens.com for more. And uh, membership begins at only $5 a month. We're fortunate to have uh, members here in Athens that support our mission. If you'd like to become one, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, more membership and sponsorship information is available at historicathens.com. Um, normally we say after this episode, you can head over to the Facebook page for the Welcome Center, which we operate um, for their two o'clock live cast. In this case, you'll be watching a rerun instead of watching it live because we did have to uh, push this episode an hour late. But we do encourage you to head over there. They do excellent programming on local historic sites each day at two o'clock to continue welcoming you around Athens. Uh, today's episode is one of our last. It's hard to believe that because when we started on April 13th, this felt like such a, a long journey. But uh, we, uh, we are back tomorrow with community leader Linda Davis, who works with Brooklyn Cemetery, school board member, does so many different things. Um, and then next week for our final week, uh, with this program. So if you'd like to view a future broadcast, tune in at one o'clock at our Facebook page. If you'd like to view a previous episode, please visit our video archives. Um, and then one last quick note, if you're looking for a quick and easy way to show your support for Historic Athens, you can visit historicathens.com. We've partnered with local designers um, and uh, Satisfactory Printing to offer t-shirts. They're available now. Our uh, Buildings of Athens has already been funded. We've received enough orders. We're, we're getting closer to that on Boulevard, um, and we still need some additional orders for Rock Springs Historic District. So check that out at historicathens.com for more details, um, and we'd love to have your support. Okay, so uh, Balbina, uh, Joe Beth, I'm going to get uh, Gerardo back in. And uh, let's see here. There we go. Let's get names where they should be. Let's get this person here. 
back there and we're back together. Okay, so it always looks vaguely like the opening of the Brady Bunch, but uh, uh, we, we get where we need to go. Um, uh, so, and I, I do want to share this comment here. Uh, Aaron said, Joe Beth, uh, thank you for sharing about the new model that you lead will be rolling out. I appreciate all that you do and the you lead team do to support so many amazing scholars. So thank you, Aaron. And yes, thank you, Joe Beth. Um, all right, so I'd like to uh, go through uh, some basic questions um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get this for each of you. So the first one's a fun one, okay? Uh, right now, you know, so many restaurants, so many of our favorite places in Athens are closed. You know, businesses have responded to that in different ways. My favorite is, and I, I can never pronounce Tlaloc correctly, it's like Tlaloc or Tlaloc, or, but they literally sawed a new drive through window in the side of, <laughs> their uh, restaurant so you can get drive through pupusas, which I'm very happy about. Um, but, you know, we've seen a lot of curbside, we've seen lots of different options, but so many of our place, favorite places are still closed, parks, um, businesses, things like that. Um, let's start with Gerardo. Gerardo, if all of this was over tomorrow and you could go anywhere you want uh, for the day, movie theaters, anything, um, how would you spend your day? Where would you go? Oh, Absolutely the movie theaters because it's been a while since I ever went to one and I'm just going to see uh, and even though if it's like an old or new movie, I would just definitely go see whatever is available. Absolutely. Okay, movies. Uh, movies. I had a feeling it was movies, Roberto. Um so uh <laughs> that's great. Thanks for sharing. Um Balbina, what about you? Where would you go? Um I don't know. I have a hard time. I like to, I don't like to stay home a lot, so I like to go out. So I think it would be a mixture of like a walk downtown um, and eat at Calientitos because they have the drive through but you can't eat there, um, especially on their Puerto de location. Yeah. And I would definitely go back to the YMCA um, and um, or at least to visit. I know with me, I have an autoimmune disease. So I can't really go out like where mm. places are already open um, yeah. just because um, of for my safety. But I, I'm really excited to get out and be able to do stuff that I used to be able to do before. Absolutely. That, great picks. Yes. Uh, fortunately, the east side Calientitos for a while there was doing curbside because they have a Cubano Especial that is uh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, if you all don't know what that is and you're watching, that is a Cuban that has sliced hot dogs on top. So it's really healthy. It's really good for you. It's like a salsa papas Cubano combination. Um, but that's, that's great, Belvina. And yes, getting out and walking is great. And, um, uh, we didn't realize until just now, thanks for, uh, sharing that with us, but yeah, obviously, uh, your health is very important. So we're glad that you're taking proper precautions. Um, Joe Beth, what about you? How would you spend the day? Well, I'm missing my Saturday mornings. Um, Lou and I um, always started at the farmer's market and it's it's partially open, but it's just not the same. And uh, we're not going out in any kind of crowd. So I wanna be able to go back to the farmer's market and take as much time as I want at each one of the booths there and talk to all the farmers and vendors and everything. Then we'd hop in the car and drive over to Little City Diner in uh, mm -hmm. Winterville. Mm -hmm. and eat outside and usually run into several friends there. If we were feeling um, uh, like we hadn't had our fill at Little City Diner, which never happens, but then we would <laughs> go across the street to Off the Vine and get homemade ice cream to take home mm -hmm. for the week. And so that routine is something that I do miss and look forward to getting back to. Perfectly said. Very well said. Thank you, Joe Beth. And you know, Joe Beth, I, I, you you alluded to earlier the fact that you and I go to church together. I just, uh, A, I miss seeing you and Lou and everyone at church. Uh, also, uh, even when we go back, I think it's going to be a little while before we do passing of the peace. So yeah. I, um, yes, I miss my Joe Beth hug for sure. There we go. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, second to last question here. Uh, I'm going to ask each of you to share a, a favorite local historic place um, or places. I want to be clear on what I, what I mean by that, since we have so many guests here. Uh, it, it doesn't have, you know, the technical definition of, uh, definition of historic is 50 years old or older, but it doesn't have to mean that if whatever it means to you, it can be a building, it can be an area, it can be a place you like to walk, a park, anything like that. 
Um, but uh, let's start. Uh, we'll go back with Gerardo first. So, do you have, do you have a place in Athens that uh, that's important to you? That's historic. Oh, oh me? Yeah. Yes, you. Oh, okay. <laughs> my my computer was was getting cut yeah. off just a bit, but I have to say it down town because of its uh, rich history and uh, mainly uh, and mainly of uh, of its history with the UGA campus as well because that's kind of is interesting and uh, I've been learning more about it um, recently because of the events going on right now and uh, definitely and it definitely does help out and it definitely does help me out learn more about my community and where I have been raised mm -hmm. ever since uh, child childhood. So downtown it is. Downtown it is. All right, thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Balbina, what about you? Um, something that I really like about Athens is that um, you know it preserves its history, and I know like most of downtown looks similar um, to what it did back then. So I really like that. Um, but for me, I think more specifically, um, the Athens YMCA. I grew up in the Athens YMCA. Um, it's a big part of, um, you know, I think they made me who I am today. And um, I think it's so important for our youth and um, they shape and mold all, all the now children and i'm glad that they're open they're having their summer camp they're still having mm -hmm. their um, um after school programs and stuff like that so thank you so much for sharing that one it's it, you know the athens ymca contains such important historic resources and yet here we are almost 50 episodes in and i think you're the first one to bring it up so uh mm -hmm. really incredible historic site thanks for choosing that one balbina that's great um joe beth what about you i can't wait to get back downtown and see the confederate memorial gone <laughs> and to see name, new names on all of the buildings that are currently named for racists that's what i can't wait for i so joe beth brings up another so two things that if you're watching this 50 years from now that are happening right now uh because i'm not sure how how much they've come up on this program so one is that uh, a memorial to uh, Confederate veterans, soldiers, um, and uh, departed veterans uh, has, for as long as I can remember, I know it's been in three different locations historically, uh, but it is uh, it has been at the, how, where would you describe that, Joe Beth? Uh, right across from our downtown, in between our downtown and um, the historic arch that defines UGA. And uh, uh, recently the mayor of Athens had uh, directed, uh, directed staff to determine how that memorial will be moved. Um, it has been announced this week that the intended location, so maybe viewers um, that are watching this, maybe this will be the location it will be in. When you watch this uh, is uh, a plot of land that's owned by Athens near where the one uh, civil war battle that broke out in Athens took place. Um, but yeah, so it's it's been uh, scheduled to be moved. And then the other thing that Joe Beth just alluded to, also for a future viewing audience, is that uh, the University System of Georgia, USG, along with UGA, has announced uh, following, uh, we've seen this in other states, I know I saw University of Alabama was doing it, um, but a top to bottom analysis of all names of all buildings uh, to determine which of those uh, buildings need to be changed based on the legacy of the individual they're named after. Uh, Yesterday, uh, UGA football coach Kirby Smart tweeted his support for the for that initiative, which is no small thing. Um, and so, uh, so Joe Beth is looking forward to uh, something as probably the future for her, um, but is likely the you know already happened decades ago by the time you future viewers are watching this. So, um, uh, so thanks, Joe Beth, for sharing that. Um, all right, so our last question uh, to all three of you is this. Um, if somebody is watching this a hundred years from now, all right, uh, what do you want them to know about your experience and about Athens during this time? So what, what do you want them to know? So um, Joe Beth, let's start with you so we can finish with Gerardo. So um, what would, Joe Beth, what would you want them to know a hundred years from now? That the best way to get to know Athens is to walk it. 
Mm. So Lou and I go for a 30 minute walk every day in a different neighborhood in Athens. So we've now been over to, to over 90 neighborhoods, you know, a portion, some, some neighborhoods takes four or five days to explore, some are smaller. And it is the most incredible city when you see it slowly and on mm-hmm. foot. Uh, mm-hmm. I take pictures of, you know, there's a house in Athens on Billups that has uh, bluebirds painted on the side of it. Um, there, mm. are, there's all kinds. Uh, some a friend in Sweden just said Athens must be the yard art capital of the world because there are all of these neat um, things in people's yards. So it's to see historic Athens, walk historic Athens. I, I'm going to put that on a T-shirt. I swear. Um, uh, I've seen lots of uh, uh, shows of applause for Joe Beth at various points. She said, "We've got yes, Joe Beth, yes." Yay, Joe. Then we've got a different yes, Joe Beth from Rachel. Um, and uh, and then I got a yes from Aaron. So, and these were not only just on the walking, it was on your earlier comments. Also, I do see uh, Rain uh, Strader uh, is uh, tuned in. He made a comment on the video uh, itself. I can't actually share it here, but he just said, We appreciate you lead today and in 100 years. Um, and so, Rain, thank you so much for tuning in and sharing that. Uh, so, uh, Balbina, you're up next. So what would you want folks to know in a hundred years? Um, I don't know. This was a hard one. Uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, I would like them to know that even though it has been very difficult time right now during the COVID-19, but it has kind of opened our eyes. I know Personally, in our family, we're very high paced and everybody's always on the road doing something or they're always working or whatnot, or we're always on our phones, on our computers, tablets, whatever. Um, But we've definitely used this time to um, interact more as a family and actually try to spend more quality time, bring out the old board games or, Mm -hmm. you know, have be nice. And um, I've really enjoyed that. I really miss that or we've um, gone out to parks to walk or kind of like get to know where we're at. Well, that's great. So that's a, the being able to have more family time is always a good thing. So, um, yes. and, and breaking out board games. Ironically, <laughs> in my household, our favorite board game, and this is not a joke, you all can look it up. My, our, my, our favorite board game is a board game called Pandemic. Oh. <laughs> um, and I, 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 we've been skipping that one lately. Um, so um, anyway, uh, Gerardo, uh, let's close with you. Uh, what would you like uh, folks to know 100 years from now? Um, as of right now, history is in the making. We, we're going through something uh, very big right now, but we all know that everything is going to change for the better. And uh, for Athens, it has such a rich history. There's always some inspire, some aspiring artists happening. Um, some young bands that are, that are starting to come out with their own albums. There, let's stick with it one second, Gerardo. We're losing your audio, but what you're saying sounds very important. So let's just give it a second to try to clear out. Here, I'm going to try to reset with Gerardo and we'll get him back because we, we definitely want to hear those closing words. Um, Joe Beth, uh, I appreciate you helping facilitate this conversation today and, and helping us get everyone on the line. Um, do you feel like there's anything we missed that, that should be on the historic record? Do you feel like there's anything that our viewers should know as we, as we close out today? I think it's just been, um, you know, woven into the conversation that that we have two pandemics that we're dealing with. We have a health pandemic and a racism pandemic, and those two things are related. Um, healthcare issues for um, people who are undocumented are much greater for a variety of reasons, but mostly for lack of access to healthcare. So um, I, I think in the future, people need to not look at one thing in isolation but to look at the, the whole um, uh, intersections of uh, pandemics. Thanks for sharing that, Joe Beth. And that's such an amazing and important historic 
uh, perspective. We, uh, you know, Historic Athens, one of the things we try to promote is people understanding that hi history doesn't occur in a, a vacuum. You had Jim Crow overlapping with World War I, overlapping with the 1918 flu that killed 40 million people worldwide, on top of all the other world events that were taking place at that point. And so the same way we look back at history and see that's true, I think it's important we understand that in the present. So that's really great. Gerardo, we're going to close with you. You were you were on a roll there and then technology got in the way. So you were saying there's always someone out there starting a new band and then we lost you. So can you can you finish up for us? Yeah, so there's always going to be a new people like artists. Um, like, yeah, there's going to be artists all around you always making art. And uh, you'll also see some very some very young people also striving to make change in their own community. And I've seen that firsthand. And I gotta say that the that that Athens is in pretty good hands with the young generation always striving to do what's best for their community and just to see it grow. Wow, thank you, wow. thanks, for being thanks. Order. thanks, and, and uh, I'm sure Joe Beth and I as as older Athenians would agree that um, if it's in uh, the hands of people like you and Balbina, then we're in very good shape. So um, so thank you both very much. Thank you all three of you for taking time to talk to us and sticking with us. Uh, to everyone that tuned in, uh, we will be back tomorrow at one o'clock for our conversation with community leader, Linda Davis, for what should be a very enlightening conversation. Um, we really appreciate everyone who supports this program. We'll be back at one. Um, to Joe Beth, Balbina, and Gerardo, stay with me for one moment. We're going to go offline together. To everyone else out there, please stay safe, please stay healthy, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care. Thank you.